Kate, keep the deck crew until you don't need them anymore, and then you can dismiss them. Copy. Chandler, come up and start washing dishes. I'll be there as soon as I can. Captain Lee puts you in charge of the deck team. Tell me about that. Somebody had to take control of that deck say, crew. I think he, it's because he knew Chandler couldn't. Well, we've got Chandler wearing one sneaker, acting like life is normal, dropping a grown woman on concrete, leaving two crew members on an island, and I get back and Chandler's eating ice cream because he somehow thinks he deserves an elective treat. Of chocolate ice cream. You might as well just say, F you, crew, I'm doing what I want. <laughs> and you dismissed Chandler last, right? Oh, you, you held on to him as long as possible. Chandler just seemed like the most well-rested of the deck crew, so I, if he's got time to eat chocolate ice cream, then he certainly has a lot more time for work. Well, not only he, did he have time to eat chocolate ice cream, he also had time to eat two lots of that pig roast, and we had none. And we I opened working. the freezer to put his chocolate ice cream away, and there's a sandwich that says oh, yeah. Chandler's sandwich. Like, what is Chandler's sandwich. No wonder Please no do work's getting touch. done. All he's doing is losing shoes and eating and taking naps. We're covered in sand and sweat and salt and water. Wet and gross. And he's there and he's like, just like pristine in his mm. night uniform. Like, yeah. I love no, ice No, no. Why are you wearing your night uniform? No guests are seeing you. <laughs>
Why are you wearing one shoe? It's because there had been an accident with a guest where they got stuck on the coral reef because he didn't tell them where not to jet ski. Then he had to go yeah. rescue them, and he wasn't wearing his deck shoes like Kevin Lee told him to, and he had his walk on the coral reef, so he's like, ow, ow, ow. And Kevin was like, I don't feel bad for you. You're not wearing your shoes. So now he's like, gotta wear my shoes. But he it's outside of his one. paradigm of what he knows how to do, so it does not compute, and he could only find one shoe. So in his mind, putting one shoe on was better than none. Yeah. So, <laughs> it, to me, that was a sign of like, you know, are you okay? You're wearing one shoe. It's just a weird thing. Where's the deckhands? Chandra needs his hours of rest. I'm not prepared for this. We've done the beach party on we've, a separate, been, we're in a different country yeah, than the yacht. Left on. We are in Morea. We know no one. We have no boat phone. We had to hitch a ride They've with some left random us. local. I had, to, I had to promise my placenta to this man in Morea. Oh, yeah. Of my firstborn child. Oh, yeah, because he's, he's going to plant a tree. Placenta trees. Why did you need to trade your placenta? Well, we wouldn't have got home otherwise. He owned the property where we had this party, the sunset <laughs> fire dancing Tahitian Hog Morea. Hog roast. Oh, yeah, pig, pig, pig on a spit. The pig on a spit. Yep. Thing. So he has this property, and he had a truck. And, and he had all these trees around. And we were like, where did these trees come from? He was like, well. Well, I was this just making conversation. This is my first kid's placenta tree. This is my second kid's. And they're all fruit trees, and they always give so much fruit. And we're like, uh -huh. if you take us home, Kate will give you her placenta. Yep. <laughs> Taking them for the team. <laughs> it doesn't have to be with him, for the record. <laughs> so I'm working and on like, that. Well, OK, that's another tree for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is there more that could have been done to prevent Master Pearson from <clears throat> bleeding, as he put it? From what? Oh, we didn't know. We I didn't know this because, know because I was in a truck giving away my out, future child. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's really sad. Master Pearson took it rather well. There's broken glass. You can see that. <laughs> When I sent him upstairs, he was in pretty good mood and sucked it up and took it like a big boy. So, and that was my job at that point, is to make sure that parents didn't overreact and that he didn't overreact. Because it really wasn't that big a deal. Just a little cut. It wasn't gonna bleed long enough. It would have stopped bleeding before you got a band-aid to put over it. Sure, it would have kind of been a buzzkill if you're like, stop, don't walk, there's broken glass, go yeah. the other way. Yeah, it's not ideal, but it's better than then bleeding. Four-year-olds. Yeah. Foot cut open. Chandler didn't leave any deckhands to help us put away everything, so we were kind of overwhelmed, cleaning everything, putting everything away, and then Caroline was alone on the boat, cause and effect. Being alone on the boat with all these guests coming back, got nervous, dropped the glasses. You know, it's just everything kind of snowballed. If Chandler had made the right decision to swap one of us out with a deck crew member to go back to the boat, then Caroline would never have dropped the glasses and Caroline's mistake would never have happened. Well, Chandler's mistake is the bigger mistake because he's in a leadership position and Chandler she, should know better. Yeah. This is about as f up deck crew as I've seen. This is beyond an embarrassment. That's your crew, and that's on you. It's funny that when people know in their deepest heart that they screwed up, the first thing they do is get angry at you for calling them on it. Is that something I need to tell them to drop off the gear that we put onto the tender? I can only- Excuses are just silly ass reasons for people not doing their goddamn jobs. If I have to solve your problems with your crew, then what do I need you for? Well, how was I supposed to know they didn't drop it off? You didn't wonder why the water and the snorkel gear and the towels were still in the bow of the boat? Why didn't you send the boat back? During that moment, how would you have behaved if somebody from your crew had made the mistake? I would have told my crew to leave and talked to my captain one-on-one -on -one and said, my responsibility, I own it, 
I guarantee you it will not happen again. Then as bosun, I would have went and talked to my crew. This happened, it was my mistake for not making sure that you got your job done. If Chandler had behaved that way, tell me how you would have felt. Well, it would show me that he was willing to step up to the plate. And then he was gonna have the proper conversation with his crew and not go around, you know, look how bad you made me look. No, you did that shit all on your own. This stuff cannot happen anymore. All of this comes back to me. Chandler, can I just say something? We're running around like chickens with, without a head a lot of the time. Nobody sat us down in the beginning and said, listen, this is what you need, this is what's going with. We're gonna make less mistakes because we're not doing shit last minute. When Ashton came forth and told Chandler that he was guiding us very poorly, I was relieved because I honestly did not think that these guys were going to say anything. He may know this, that, and the other about yachting, but what it boils down to is that Chandler just is not a good leader. I think the thing with Chandler is that he's, he's a bit of a control freak. Um, you know, he wants to make sure things are done properly. That's not being a control freak, bro. That's, being, that's trying to no, put but No, but, but hold on. And he struggled to delegate. Can, can you can you deny that he struggled to delegate? Yeah, he struggled to delegate, but and don't say uh, that he's a control freak. He never ever once tried to be a control freak. Well, that's it. If you if you struggle to delegate um, tasks to people because you are afraid that they're not going to be carried out right, you are okay. a control freak. Yeah, okay. And I think that that's what Chandler struggled yeah. to do. I honestly think he stood there just oblivious to what the actual problem was. Chandler and Riley, where is the tension coming from? Maybe he's nervous that Riley's more outspoken than him. There's certainly opposites. And sometimes opposites attract, but... This is not one of those times. <laughs> <laughs> you need to use your eyes. I can read, Chandler. Stop speaking to me condescendingly. I'm no, over it. I don't want to hear any back talk. A, there's guests I know, right you upstairs, never so want to stop hear yelling. Talk. Everyone needs to be accountable yeah, for everyone else. let's go ahead and let's clear this up. Shall I unroll the one? Stop thing? yelling. Stop We have guests right upstairs. If you want to hear me yell, I'll yell and you'll know the Go difference. somewhere else to have this conversation. No, we can have it right here. Chandler and Riley, like, what do you think the source of the tension is between... Have you guys got 30 minutes? <laughs> I think it's very simple. She wants to learn, but then she, there's, there's feedback and feedback. It's very hard to, to, to listen and to learn when your mouth keeps, keeps moving. You know, when you're speaking, you're not listening and you're not hearing. And I think that's what really frustrated us, and I think that's what got under Chandler's skin. With Chandler, our reoccurring problem, at least on my end, is the way he speaks to me. The way he doesn't take the time to guide me. I can sit there and say that I've done something on one boat all day long. It doesn't mean it's the same. You know, the anchor isn't the same on my boat versus a 184-foot yacht. And if I've never been in that situation, it would be stupid of me not to ask questions. And maybe there's a time and a place for it, but that time and that place was never given to me. Riley's a handful. She's a lot to handle. Yeah. Um, and she would be a lot to handle for any bosun. Her human. <laughs> but uh, for Chandler especially, because... He's a very delicate soul. Mm -hmm. He Also, his dad was a captain. I wonder if he like kind of just... He feels like he has gone up the ranks now, so this is so confusing for him. He's just so confused. It's like when you tell somebody who thinks the world is flat that it's round, they're like... Poof. Mind blown. Yeah, he's like, what is... This is a female, and she's talking to me loud, and <laughs> she's not the bosun, and I am, so I'm going to bed. I'm going to put my eye mask on and go yeah, to bed. Yeah, I can't think about this.